Barbara Nisman, and I am speaking to you from my music studio here in beautiful Greenbrier County, West Virginia. And how I wish we could all be together in the concert hall, and hopefully we will do that soon. But in the meantime, I thought it would be fun to invite you into my home. Uh, I spent a lot of time in this studio and share with you what I'm doing here. Actually, I'm preparing um, Beethoven sonatas for recordings next month. So I wanted to introduce you to another Beethoven sonata. Now, usually uh, we see these pictures of Beethoven being so serious and intent, and we don't realize, or sometimes we forget, what a terrific sense of humor he had. In fact, the opening music you heard was one of his funniest pieces called Rage Over a Lost Penny. I love playing that for children because they love imagining Beethoven on his hands and knees looking for that lost penny. And uh, it's really a, a great piece of slapstick. And this sonata, um, the Opus 31, number three in A flat, uh, in four movements, is really a lighter uh, sonata. That's not to say it's not challenging, but I think it really reveals that wonderful sense of humor Beethoven had. Actually, you're going to even see a lot of slapstick, or that, that seems to be my interpretation. Now, I learned this sonata way back in my university days, and remember I told you that those were the days when I was just gobbling up repertoire, and uh, I don't really think I dug deep enough. I never went uh, behind the notes. Of course, I learned the notes, and uh, but I really didn't think of what Beethoven's conception really was. So um, now I've had the time uh, to uh, live with these pieces and rediscover them. And I, I've really come to the conclusion that, um, especially the first movement, is um, a bit of Beethoven slapstick. And, and he's uh, having a go at opera buffa. In fact, listen to the opening. Um, now, this is um, a phrase where uh, pianists can do lots of interpretations. Now, I hear it as a dialogue between, um, let's say, a male singer, very macho, and, and uh, a diva, <laughs> a soprano. So we hear this mode that he says, and then it's answered.
Christmas spoof was when he brings back that theme um, in the return, he even gives a bigger cadenza for the opera singer. It's like she's out doing him or he's out doing her. Uh, you'll see it just keeps going on and on. So then um, let's get back. Uh, after the exposition, then Beethoven gives us this development. And he starts again with this motive. Um, he's great at milking a motive. Thank you. 
my interpretation. And of course, there are many ways to interpret this movement, but um, I think this is Beethoven really being funny and having a go at it. <laughs> and, um, and actually, it's, it's wonderfully written. And you can see how he uses that same motive throughout. And then he'll even bring it in the coda where you think you, we have no idea where he's going to go with it. And of course, he finally gives us an ending. Beethoven loves to stretch out his endings, uh, but he's a master. He's a master craftsman. Um, and um, this is such a wonderful movement. Okay, now we get to the second movement, which is usually, um, it's either an adagio or a scherzo. Now, Beethoven chooses to give us um, a scherzo. It's interesting, there's no adagio movement in this sonata, which also, I think, supports my point that it's, um, it's a lighter, uh, funny um, work uh, that he's having, he's really having fun here. So he gives us a scherzo, but what makes this scherzo so unusual? Usually, scherzos are in 3-4 time. Uh, that's been the general case. He gives us a scherzo in 2-4, and he marks it alleg allegretto, this is interesting, um, but vivace. <laughs> so uh, we're betwixt and between, not too fast, but not too slow. Um, and it's a wonderful piece of writing because he, the left hand has a, this wonderful staccato accompaniment. Uh, let me show you.
those surprising key changes that, and those sforzandos and all that staccato writing, which is so well done. Oh, and can you imagine Beethoven playing this? Uh, actually, he liked the sonata. He liked playing the sonata. So, um, and also, when you think about it, compared to his other scherzo movements in his other sonatas, he really uh, enlarges this movement. It, it's kind of bigger than most. It's, it's written in sonata form. Usually it's just a three-part um, movement, simple movement. Okay, and then he gives us a minuet and trio. And, and this is, in a way, I think in my mind, this is the equivalent of his lyrical adagio movement. And if you close your eyes and don't know that Beethoven wrote it, you would think that Schubert might have written this movement. It's just a, a beautiful melody, and let me just play it through, and I'll, I'll talk. I'll try and talk as I'm playing it for you. Minuet. Um, this is 
what we call the ABA, middle section, then he returns. And Beethoven does write in all those repeats. And actually, it's so beautiful that you do want to repeat them. And I, in my mind, I would think that this is his equivalent of his adagio movement, even though it's not written adagio. What I mean is that, in a way, the heart is, is speaking really prominently and more directly. And then he launches into a very virtuosic finale called and I think he marks it presto con fuoco, very fiery, presto with fire. And uh, the finale has the nickname of the hunt because you'll hear um, a motive that, that really does sound like the hunters. And this is a very virtuosic movement. I, so you see he's getting more towards his middle period where he's exploiting the instrument and having fun at the instrument, actually. This is, this is really a fun movement. And it's, it's an, a large movement, actually. It's in um, a three-part form. And let me just play it for you and give you an idea, and you'll see what I mean. <laughs>
practice. <laughs> but now you get a rough idea of this four movement. Wonderful sonata. It's not played that often. I wish it were played more often because it's Beethoven with, with a great sense of humor. He's really having fun. He's having fun in this last um, movement. You heard all those hunting calls, uh, which the pianist has to imitate. So um, I think we need a little more humor in our lives these days, um, especially when we listen to the news. And um, this is what music provides. And, and actually Beethoven runs the gamut of emotion. I, um, and this is really, this has become one of my favorite sonatas because I'm having so much fun um, discovering it and um, and seeing where I'm going to go with it and uh, appreciating that wonderful sense of humor Beethoven had. Um, he spoke to all of us, you know, um, didn't need words, didn't need um, no miscommunication. And of course, it's the challenge for the performer to um, dig deeply and keep trying to get closer to um, what the maestro was trying to say. So um, that's why it's a lifelong challenge. And um, actually I'm having fun uh, living with um, Dejo and wrestling with him um, on lots of occasions. And um, But I hope you've enjoyed this session. And you know what, I intend to uh, just share with you um, these new Beethoven sonatas that I'm discovering and working on. And I, um, it, it's nice to be able to let you know uh, where I am with this work. And then um, I'm sure when you listen to the recording, we'll, it will be very different than, than what you've heard today. But this is the wonderful process that um, we go through when we listen to music and when we make music. So um, it's for us to enjoy. And in the meantime, please um, keep well, keep safe. And for sure, we will meet again soon. And thank you so much for listening.